in Pontiac, Michigan. Welcome, everybody, to the Midwest Regional Final featuring the Jayhawks of Kansas against the Wildcats of Kansas State. Kansas seated number six, ousted Xavier and Murray State in Lincoln, Nebraska, then got by Vanderbilt here on Friday night to advance to the final round. And the K-State Wildcats defeated LaSalle and DePaul down in South Bend, Indiana, then a big upset over top-seeded Purdue, 73-70, here on Friday night. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, and welcome. We promise not to stretch the metaphor too far, but the yellow brick road has taken a rather unexpected turn and route back to Kansas. We're here in Pontiac, Michigan. Kansas and K-State have played each other 213 times over the past 81 years. This is the first time they've ever met outside of the state of Kansas or Kansas City, Missouri. I'm working with Tommy Heinz and Tommy. Fascinating, unexpected matchup. Two terrific stars, Mitch Richmond and Danny Manning. Well, Mitch Richmond is the guy that fills in the cracks for Kansas State. When they need rebounding, he gives them that. He gives them the outside shot when they're having troubles in that department. And he's probably one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in all of college basketball. Danny Manning scored 38 points the other night against Vanderbilt. They elected to play him one-on-one. -on -one. Lon Kruger knows you don't do that to Danny Manning, and Manning's going to face a zone that the last time they played... Kansas State held them to 18 points. Ought to be quite a matchup today. Kansas State slightly favored. These two teams have played four times already. Or this is the fourth. Back in just a moment. The whole championship regional final game from Pontiac is sponsored by United Airlines. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. The new Audi 90. It's everything you hoped driving would be. And by Stroh's and Stroh Light. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here. The wonderful skyline of the city of Detroit, Michigan. We're... Larry said uh, yesterday, every time he goes on a road trip, he packs his suitcase as if he's going recruiting because he thinks it's going to be the last game they play. Here's Henson. Uh, three on two. Traveling. Uh, that's the type of defense Danny Manning's going to be facing. Just for him to receive the pass will be a major accomplishment. They'll have guys shooting at him as he's receiving the pass and coming from underneath trying to knock the ball away. Larry Brown off the bench giving an earful to Jeff Gildner about getting back on defense. 4 2, low scoring game. We played three minutes and five seconds. Gildner doesn't want the shot this time. And again, Bledsoe and Henson back double-teaming Manning. There's the shot from the corner, Milt Newton. Uh, he is the, probably the best outside shooter that they have from the foul line down to the baseline. And if they start giving him that shot, he could be a big factor in this game. Richmond and the man-for-man -man Kansas defense. Lon Kruger said he thought Kansas had one of the best, the three best man-for-man -man defenses in the country. The other two were Duke, which all of you saw yesterday. And Southwest Missouri State by Charlie Spoonow. Another foul. This foul's on Mitch Richmond. It's going to take some excellent blocking out by Kansas, Kansas to keep foul, number 20, a very Richmond. aggressive Kansas number State 10, team off the board. Led Kansas. by that man, Mitch Richmond. I'll tell you, he gives an extra dimension to the quick forward spot with his leaping ability. Jeff Geldner is going to get a spot on the bench. And Larry Brown wants him right next to him. And they're going to chat a little bit. Scooter Barry's come in. Well, Scooter Barry gives him a point guard. That's Gilmer on the bench trying to get his head together and saying, hey, I want to do something in this tournament. He's had some problems, but Pritchett is still up at the top of that offense. There's Pritchett. Barry hits the jumper, 6-4 Kansas. Uh, and that's going out on that baseline and going to play those men. So that shot is going to be wide open. And Barry just moved in a lot closer to the hoop than Gilmer did. Scooter Barry's dad is Rick Barry. There's a traveling call on K-State. One of the things Larry Brown is concerned about in this ball game is, needless to say, Danny Manning getting in foul trouble. 
And Ron Kruger has not elected to go inside to test that to try and pick up a couple of early fouls again. What a difference in Friday night's first uh, first games here in Pontiac, Kansas. Jumped out to a 17 to 4 lead in its win over Vanderbilt. Meanwhile, K-State fell behind 10-zip to Purdue. And they were down at the half by nine. Still came back to win. Manning shot no good. Uh, and he had to take the shot quickly right off the catch. Scott for two. Boy, that's a rarity. It's a two-pointer. <laughs> when he gets the ball at the letters, it's two points. You have to be sitting right a one-arm distance away from him to give him any trouble. Look at Mitch Richmond just back down inside there. And look at him put the body on Manning to keep him off the offensive board. Well, Scooter Berry has given Kansas something that Jeff Geldner did not to open the game. He's two for two. Geldner was 0 for two. Well, he's given him an awareness that he that shot is there. And he's got enough confidence to take it. Richmond rejected. A man-to-man -man Venus flytrap defense in action. They filtered him to the shot blocker. Danny Manning. 8-6 Kansas. 14-35 to go first half. To go first half. Now Scooter Berry is going to try and play in Scott's face. Bledsoe kicks it out. Didn't get there quick enough. 3-3. Three for three. Scott. 15 for 16 in the last three games. I think Scooter Berry made a mistake that time. There's no re reason to go down and double team on Bledsoe. You better stick in Scott's jersey. Scott from Kansas City, Missouri. Here's a steal and a foul. Scooter Berry. Kansas foul number 10. This Kansas Berry State is zone first. is as active as you ever saw. 73% from three-point range and 15 of his last 16. Like many of Lon Kruger's players, he's a JC transfer. But what a performance he's had. He has been just like a Saturday night special. He's had a hot barrel this whole tournament. 12-10. Back it goes to Bledsoe. Foul on Manning. Kansas foul number 25, Manning, his first. You're going to see now, it comes down the sideline and into Mitch Richmond. And the next thing you know, he spots the middle wide open as Manning went down in that Venus flytrap defense once again. But uh, one block is enough for Richmond. He finds the open man. Bledsoe's a little exasperated. He is, uh, as we said, not a good free throw shooter. 52% for the year. But he'll be an important player here. He has to at least hold even with Chris Piper on the boards. And so far, he's kind of been doing that. 0 for 4, 12 10. Kansas State on top. Scooter Berry hit by Henson, kicks it back to Pritchard. Quick release, Manning moves, loses. They've got Manning changing his rhythm a little bit. That was extra quick. Richmond kicks it back to Scott. He's three for three, finally misses. Rebound, Bledsoe, traveling. Substitutions for Kansas now. Keith Harris is going to uh, come in for the Jayhawks and replace Scooter Berry. And Fred McCoy, who was a starter earlier in the year for Kansas State, is now in the lineup replacing Ron Meyer. There's McCoy. Well, Harris is one of uh, Kansas's best defensive players, may be the best, but not an exceptional outside shooter. And it looks like they're going to put Piper on the perimeter. Newton. They got McCoy shoving off underneath. And McCoy represents for Kansas State a wide body, a guy that can Kansas take State up an awful lot of room in close McCoy to the basket first. in their blockouts uh, that really will help them control the defensive board. Played nearly eight minutes, only 12 to 10. Surprised by the low score? No, I think both teams, uh, they're not particularly interested in fast breaks unless it's definitely there off steals or something like that. They're not playing tempo basketball. This is, these are two finesse teams. You've got to find openings in each one's defense. Back to Pritchard for three. 
Kuiper, long rebound. He puts it up off the glass. Offensive foul. Well, I hate to be a big guy rebounding in the air. You take so many shots, and you grab a rebound, a little guy slides up underneath you, and they call a, an offensive foul on you. You know what? Come with the rebound. He goes straight up. The man came underneath him and made him go off balance. That's tough to do. Uh, you guys never get a break. Listen to this. Spoken from the body of a 6'7". Former All-Pro and Hall of Fame. I think referees are all gone. <laughs> 12 to 10. 11.30 to go. Oops. Here comes Trixie with K-State. Piper, they look for Manning. He pops out along the baseline. Drives that off-balance to Red Jumper and hits it. That time, he sighted the basket, had it well sighted before he released the ball. High to 12. Manning's got four. He had a, an unbelievably torrid start against Vanderbilt. 25 first half points on 12 and 16. You don't expect him to get that kind of point for now. Because he's going to be forced into more outside shooting. And this man right now is being harassed all over the place by some great one-on-one -on -one defense by Kansas. Jeff Keltner back into the lineup now, replacing Milt Newton. And an unexpected fourth turnover for K-State early. Tied at 12, midway through the first half of play. Winner goes to Kansas City, joining Oklahoma as the second Big 8 team in the Final Four. And, of course, Duke is in. Arizona, North Carolina coming up later this afternoon from Seattle. Piper. That'll open it up. I tell you, he does not shoot often. I don't know why he doesn't take more shots, but when he starts shooting, He's an exceptional shooter. Or at least it appears to me he's an exceptional shooter. Piper averaging just under five points per game for the year. Now Scott is left side. He runs the baseline. Richmond looks in the corner for him. Richmond. Rims out. Bledsoe rebound. Put back is good. Now, Piper let Bledsoe just run right around him for that rebound. Bledsoe has got such quick feet while that, to get to the position while the ball is in the air before it hits the rim. 9 to 14, 9.44 to go first half. Quick pass to Harris in the corner. The shot is good. That's where the shots are going to be all afternoon long, along that baseline. That's where Danny Manning's going to have to find his and any of the other people who go down in that corner will be able to get an outside shot. Now Gelder right in the face of Scott. Richmond dumps it off to McCoy. Hacked by Pritchard. The offense of Kansas State flows through Kansas Mitch Richmond. Team Pritchard, his first. That's the sixth team foul on KU. And Fred McCoy goes to the line. Number 44, McCoy, will shoot for Kansas State, two shots. Didn't this guy come in the other night and have himself a ball game? Just spread right out and was able to play one-on-one -on -one close to the hoop. And came up with eight big points. Part-time started this year, then gave way to Ron Meyer. Meyer started, and McCoy came in and started for a while, and Meyer's been the started, starter for the last 10-12 uh, games. McCoy hits two, Meyer getting ready to come back in. We're tied, 9.18 to go, first half. So Oklahoma, with a late stretch, outlast Willie Mascarino's Villanova team, 78-59, the slowdown game. The Oklahoma Sooners will meet either North Carolina or Arizona. That game is coming up from Seattle with Brent Musburger and Billy Packer following the conclusion of our game here on CBS. Lon Kruger, in his second year as head coach at K-State. Interesting, I was reading the paper this morning. He played ball in Israel after his graduation for the Israel Sabres, and his coach was Herb Brown, Larry Brown's older brother. Danny Manning. Manning. Well, if you can't get the ball inside a zone defense, you can always go over the top, particularly if you got a guy like Danny Manning that's got the good leap. Manning for the year is averaging 25 points per game, but in three previous meetings with K-State has yet to hit his average. 
McCoy for K-State. We're tied again. Boy, he's got that wide body at work again. He just spreads out. He's one of the best position big guys you see in college basketball. He knows how to get it and keep it. And again, with Grissom, the point man in the zone, K-State in that 3-2. Manning, and look at the strip. Richmond got it away. Manning gets it back and puts it through. He's got eight. He had the ball about eight feet from the hoop, and there were four people around him, and they stripped him of the ball, only Maya just threw a bad pass back inbound. Manning now four of six. McCoy takes the jumper from the free throw line. Gets the roll, drops in high again. Scott has 11, three of those on three-pointers. Manning with eight points now, the leading scorer in the ball game. Tied at 20, eight minutes to go. Winner gets Duke next Saturday in Kansas City on CBS. Kansas has already played Duke once this year. They went to overtime in Lawrence. And Duke won it. Gelder passes on the shot. They look for Manning. He's, oh, he was open the pass a little too high. Gelder tries to save it. On the line. Three turnovers now for Kansas. Four for Kansas State. They moved the ball around very nicely that time against State's defense. Number 10, Barry. And I guess the pass is a little bit too high because Manning really had great position about four feet from the hoop. Geldner had not become a starter until the middle of this season. And Larry Brown said, bless his heart, he's really played nervously in the tournament. So he's going to give him a rest now and put the Scooter Berry back yet. Richmond for three. Kansas State is the third best three-point shooting team in the United States. That's coming into the tournament. And they've uh, excelled at that tactic throughout. 23-20 K-State. In contrast, Kansas is not a good three-point shooting out there. Here's Manning. Buster Glover, who's in the lineup for K-State, number 11, another of the J.C. transfers, comes out. And one of the ways that they out-rebound you on defense, Kansas State, is they send the guards down to help out on every shot attempt. Is that an unusual tactic? Well, uh, teams like to keep their guards out and around half court, maybe to start a, a fast break. And you don't find too many guards that want to get hit in the forehead. I think that's the most important point. That's right. But I guess if you play for Lon Kruger, you got to take a few hits in the forehead. I know Henson's willing to do it. Steve Henson has the ball right now to McPherson, Kansas. Richmond from Fort Lauderdale. Richmond's in his first year at K-State, transferring from Mobley, Missouri Junior College. That's for three. What great defense that time by Kansas. A motion offense, and they kept forcing Kansas State out, out, out further. Harris. Manning works from the left side. No. McCoy rebound for K-State. And look at five jerseys back there. Inside challenging for the defensive rebound. Matter of fact, Kansas State was out-rebounded by Purdue despite the win Friday night. It was only the ninth time all year that they have been out-rebounded. McCoy, double team. Rubber, mismatch over Harris. Good. When you rush out and the ball goes from inside outside, you better rush out low because you can get right by that rush man. Largest lead of the game now, Kansas State by five. Five, 20 to go, first half. Ron Meyer and Danny and Danny Manning elbowing each other. Meyer tries to front him. Manning puts it up and gets the ball. Not much room to slip passes through. You really kind of penetrate, have to penetrate and dish it off a little bit. And the more shots Manning gets, of course, the better off uh, Kansas is going to be. They've had mucho triples in prior games just getting Manning the ball. Rare time that Kansas is in a hurry across the timeline. Now they settle it down. This is a Kansas team that had expectations of a national title back in October, but 
They had Joe Young declared academically ineligible. There's Fisher driving all the way. No basket offensive foul. Ball made by Dickie Paparo. If you don't have a shot blocker like Kansas State, what you do is you train your big guys to get into the attack lane and pick up charge calls. Beautiful play that time by Meyer. On Friday night, Danny Manning passed Larry Bird for the number eight spot. With that basket, he has passed Elvin Hayes for the number seven position all time. Two women's teams battle for the national title. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship next Sunday. Kansas State 25, Kansas 22, and here's some great defense coming up. What they do on Manning, he's to the left of your screen. They surround him with two guys, but then look at all five white jerseys inside with good blockout position, and Kansas is only getting one shot, and that's great defensive basketball. K-State with an 11-10 rebound edge early on now. 25-22, Steve Henson with the ball, sophomore. Carlos Diggins has come into the lineup for Kansas State number 25. Another junior college transfer. There are seven on the squad of Ron Curtis. So K-State now has Henson, Bledsoe, Diggins, McCoy, and Will Scott. Mitch Richmond is getting a rest. Manning is still in the lineup for Kansas. Henson, two-pointer. Scooter Berry takes it away from McCoy. 3.40 to go at halftime. There's Richmond with only four points so far in the game. Barry gives a look in to Manning. Blood still flooding him. Piper kicks out. Of course, says, take it if you want it. Richard. Manning. Newton with a good rebound. Trip to the ball, Barry saves it. I'd say that was a great rebound by Milt Newton. As soon as the penetration happened, everybody went to the board for uh, Kansas State, but nobody put a body that time on Newton. Richard. Bledsoe for K-State. We're live at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, where Kansas and Kansas State are meeting for the fourth time this season. Largest lead of the game has been five. That just moments ago, 25-20. Kansas hitting 46%, K-State 53%, Scott with 11 and Manning for 10, the leading scorers so far. Tight and taut, just like we expected. Traveling, both men had, uh, for Kansas had their hands on the ball. You can say truly about this game, it has been an exceptional defensive battle. And you're going to see right now, four jerseys in there for Kansas, and Milt Newton and... Danny Manning get tied up, and Manning may have had his foot on the floor, but Newton was moving both of his. K-State to inbound, Richmond back in the line. Double team, they switch. Richmond gets rid of it, finds Bledsoe. He is a creator of offense for other people. That's why I think you can be a guard in the pro league. Does an outstanding job of reading the defense and finding an open man. Very unselfish, and that's what's put Kansas State out in front. He's passing. Foul on Bledsoe. Saw the coming up at halftime, just two minutes and two seconds from right now. Back to Jim Nash, James Brown in our New York studio. On a feature on Sean Elliott, the Arizona kid. His Ruth Olsen's team makes on Dean Smith of North Carolina coming up at the conclusion of our game. As the road to the Final Four continues here on CBS. This, I think, is uh, as much fun as all of us have at any point <laughs> during the year. Not that anybody's going to accuse us of labor at any other time. Pritchard, boy, his three-point shooting, Tommy, last year at 40% as a number two guard, and having to take over at the point guard is really effective in this game. Well, he's got double responsibility. He's got to run the offense and then also find his own offense. And I don't know if he's prepared for it, although he's done a much better job of it towards the tail end of the season. That new role, he's become more accustomed to it. Barry quickly out on Scott. Scott dishes off. Bledsoe not ready for it. Barry has it. 27-22, under 90 seconds to go in the half. Rejected. 
in rather emphatic fashion by Will Scott. He looked like Mike Brown. Mike Brown, huh? He has one of the few fast break attempts, but they have three people back. Uh, they angle them off, and that just allowed the setup for Scott to come in and block it. Piper, and you saw Scott go down to Dublin. Now Pritchard tries to penetrate, kicks it back outside to Newton. Good. That's for two. He is, again, that best shooter from down inside that free throw line, out around 18 feet. Bill Newton was born in the Virgin Islands and was the captain of the Virgin Islands team in the Pan Am game by some of the Indianapolis. Here's Scott for three again. Scott. Oh, it doesn't end. Wow, he comes off two. two. They changed it. Two. Doesn't make any difference. Must have missed it by a half inch. He thought it was a three, and we did too. 29-22. Largest lead in the game. If you like a game with defense, we've got it for you. That's the end of the first half with our score, K-State 29, Kansas 27. We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. In of Kansas State's 29 points, and the Wildcats lead the Jayhawks by two with a spot in Kansas City on the line. In the first half, taking a tremendous amount of pressure off of Mitch Richmond. I tell you, 13 points is a big, big plus for them. What about Danny Manning? He seems to warm up there in the late going. 10 points in the first half, not a bad job, but the key for him will be to get that ball down a low post, kick it out quickly when he's got two and three men on him. His teammates have got to convert from the outside. Right. Will Scott now 21 for 29 and three-point shots in the tournament. We'll send you back to the Silver Dome. Third spot in the final four on the line. After this message, and a word from the local state. Not an unexpected score at halftime. 29-27, K-State favored by two coming in. Leads by two at the half. Terrific defensive effort thus far, but Will Scott has been a big story for K-State, hitting three of five from three-point range. Danny Manning has ten. But Tommy Heinz and I think the key has been the number of shots that Richmond and Manning have been held to. That's the defense that was planned by both coaches. Limit the number of attempts by both players. You see, Manning took only ten. In Vanderbilt's game the other night, he took 16 in the first half. And look at Richmond, he only has five. So the man-to-man -man defense is doing a job. But look what Richmond does. As soon as he gets puts it on the floor and draws double attention, he's been passing off and creating good situations for others. So that has been a big plus for Kansas State. Vanderbilt the other night, actually 17 first half shots. Today, five of 10, 25 points at the half the other day but 10 at the half today. Now, that is not unexpected, though. No, and uh, I think that because they have played each other so many times, they know where Manning likes to take the shots, where he likes to receive the ball, and Kansas State has made an adjustment in that defense accordingly. Underway with the second half, 29-27. Kansas State has Henson with the ball now, Ron Meyer, Bledsoe, Richmond, and Will Scott, the starting five. And Kansas still in the man-for-man -man with Pritchard, Manning, Piper, Milt Newton, and Jeff Geldner is in to start. Now he's out in the face of Will Scott. He can for Meyer. They kick it out to Henson. That's for three. He's got it. Henson for three. Just as you think that you do not have to go out and you can hang around in the paint, the next thing you know, they'll kill you from the outside. As a team, Kansas State hitting 60% from three-point range throughout the tournament. They're better than that today. Gelder takes the shot. No, he's over for three. Newton missed time to leap, and Henson has the long rebound. Kicks it back out. And they'll go into the half-court offense. Largest lead of the game, five. K-State has equaled that now. Meyer has the shot open. The lead is seven. 
And Piper tried to deny, and once the pass went past his hand, it was an easy two for Meyer. In this half, first basket of the game for Henson, first for Meyer, Danny Manning gets two more in his foul. Danny Manning wears a wristband. It says number 23 on it. That's in honor of his senior teammate, Archie Marshall. One of the devastating things that happened to this team was when Marshall went down with a serious knee injury in December in the Garden against St. John's. Archie Marshall had to sit out all of last year after a knee injury sustained in the semifinal match against Duke in Dallas. Marshall is on the bench. And there was a terrific moment in Kansas' last home game when Marshall came on for about 10 seconds. Made a reappearance in a Kansas uniform. Took a 30-foot shot. Came out of the game with a standing ovation. Number 23. Meyer dishes off to Bledsoe. What an intelligent play that time. They've got Danny Manning defending against Bledsoe. They feel that like he can be a shot blocker and cheat off Lezzo, and that time Myers read it perfectly. Piper hits three. Piper has a man that's been given that shot every single time the Kansas has had the ball. And if he starts hitting that, this score will change quickly. up for the three again. Shot short. Newton is mistiming his leaps just a little bit and barely got that rebound. May have mistimed it, but he hung up there. That's right. <laughs> Grab the air hook. And for two. He could have flown a trailer on him for advertising to print himself out. He's not quite one of your wide bodies, though. No. <laughs> he was up there a long time. 36-33. Scott misses. He's three of six in the game for three points today. Oh, Fisher lets it go. Number 10, Barry in for Kansas. Scooter Barry coming in for Jeff Gildner. Barry had a fine first half. Made a couple of key shots and stepped inside to make the shots easier for himself along the baseline. Something that Gildner did not do so far in this second half. He's been taking the tough, long jumpers instead of getting inside the three-point line. Richmond from the baseline. Richmond. Well, never took it into the defense, and when he turned to the baseline that time, his shooting hand wide open. Lead back at five. The largest Kansas lead has been two, that on several occasions in the first half. Manning. Oh, just a nice soft touch. When Milt Newton is in that corner, they have to go out and attack him, and that opened up the passing into Danny Manning. Manning with 16. Leads all scores now. Bledsoe. Over Manning, too strong. Off of Chris Piper, K-State ball. I tell you, Chris P Piper is one fundamentally sound basketball player. He had Meyer on his back and blocked out, only just couldn't control the ball. Look at how they jump out on that man to keep him out of the paint. And look at Richmond find the open man after the double team comes out. As soon as the double team develops, that's a signal for the other Kansas defenders to play a little bit of a zone. And Richmond is reading that beautifully all afternoon. 40-35. Tempo has picked up a little bit in this half, though. And there's Piper once again wide open on the uh, baseline. He could be a star in this ball game because they are going to give him that shot. Kevin Pritchard guarding Steve Henson. Scott, jumper no good. Barry rebound. Kansas on the run. We don't see Kansas State force many shots. Offensive? No, it's on Steve Henson. So Scooter Barry will go to the free throw line. Where, as expected, the son of Rick Berry is an outstanding free throw shooter. And here he comes up, splits the defense as they were trying to play, the defense was trying to play the wingman, 
playing for the pass, but he alertly just took it strong to the hoop. Number 11, Lincoln Miner, who was uh, a one-time starting point guard for Kansas, makes his first appearance in the game, and he replaces Kevin Pritchard. It was Pritchard who replaced Miner at point guard. Well, you talk about a guy with a negative stat. Poor Lincoln Miner has tried 17 three-pointers this year, and he's 0 for the season. <laughs> He's got to look at Will Scott and say, how does he do that? <laughs> Yesterday in East Rutherford, of course, Duke with that tenacious man for man outlasted the top seed Temple, 63-53. Held Temple to 28 points, six from the field. Next Saturday, 50 years at the Final Four as Duke is back in it again. That's at 5 o'clock Eastern time as a prelude to our coverage of the national semifinals. Keith Harris back in the lineup now and replacing Chris Piper. A good adjustment here by both coaches to try and allow their big guns to have a little stamina coming down the stretch. And Harris will play Bledsoe. This man out on the top is being harassed. Good ball pressure by Kansas. They're known for it. Buster Glover's in the lineup now for K-State. Richmond. Newton. Oh, got it. Richmond. When he gets that shooting hand freed up, and he's moving to his right, he's going to outleap anybody his own size. He's a freak player. Jerry West was a freak player. Had such long arms. You have to match them up to try and take that away from him, and he'd just go right around you with his speed. That's what Milton... Uh, Mitch Richmond. Milt Newton has that one. Mitch Richmond was laughing yesterday at the press conference, said his name has been butchered by more people in this tournament, <laughs> including us. <laughs> He's been called Rich Mitchman, Milt Richmond, Rich Milton, and it's Mitch Richmond. I'm going home in front of the mirror in practice. I like what Curry Kirkpatrick referred to him as yesterday. The wicked Mitch of the West. <laughs> try that. Well, he doesn't have a pointy hat, though, with a broom. Yeah, try that in a hurry about six <laughs> times at 11.30 at night. Harris with a steal. <laughs> and that is why Larry Brown claims that Keith Harris is his best defensive player. Took the ball away from Richmond. That's the first Kansas lead since midway through the first half. <laughs> and they're on a 14-6 to run now. Say, a neither team wants to go back to their state. Lincoln Miner. Oh, what a defensive jam by Henson. Steve Henson is only 6'1", but he is a decathlete. I think we saw an example of how he can compete in that sport right well, there. And he's got a head of steam on Henson. And look at Henson just go up there and time it perfectly. That's a saber. Call. Steve Henson with a marvelous play prevented Kansas from extending its lead. Watch it, Tommy. There's two great defensive plays. That first pickoff by Miner on a denied defense, and then as Henson bought, what a leap that was. Steve oh. Henson. McPherson, Kansas, all-state player, recruited by both Kansas and K-State. McPherson not far from the increasingly well-known Berg of Lindsborg. <laughs> where where well, all the Lundquist family yes. is split today. Yes, yes. Half in purple and half in blue. K-State uh, and Kansas. You're not revealing by any chance your feelings in this one, are Not at all. Okay. I'm a Bethany College fan. <laughs> Manny again. 18 points for Danny Manny. He's yeah. yet to reach his season average against K-State, but he's on the way now. Up there having uh, the ability to slip the ball inside to him a lot easier in this half. Buster Glover with the ball. And that's because Kansas, uh, K-State uh, is uh, having to extend their defense a little bit. Oh, Richmond gets two more. There's no way you can let him come back to the right. You must send him to the left and make him bring the ball back to you. Every time he takes it and you free up his shooting hand, it's two points. Well, 
19 to go in the ball game. Winner joins Oklahoma and Duke in the final four. The fourth part of the puzzle to be determined later this afternoon. Arizona, North Carolina next here on CBS. Brett and Billy are out there. Richard, no. That's a shot he has to hit. Richmond was down inside the defense. Glover for three. Richard with a rebound. And Kansas on the run. Kansas State has been in this 3-2 zone the entire ball game. We saw them against Rod Strickland and DePaul. There's a rejection by Bledsoe. Barry. This same defense took a point man, one of the best point mans in America, Rod Strickland, and controlled him in the win over the ball. It can yep. do a lot of things. And it can collapse easily and go out and extend and do things like this, block shots. Now that's an exceptional zone defense that can be that aggressive. And of course against Purdue, they used some man-to-man, -man, some box and one, but primarily the same defense. They, uh, yes they did, but they, they took away some of the outside shots of Purdue. They took away, but they made McCants step out three or four feet than he's usually uh, is used to getting the ball and that affected his shooting so all kinds of good things that they've learned to do with his zone defense of line Kruger Milt Newton comes back in Purdue of course was heavily favored over K-State on Friday night there was a funny story the Kansas State team went to a dinner on Thursday night at a local restaurant there was a huge sign there that said welcome Purdue it turned out that the Purdue team had made reservations for Saturday night, assuming they would be here. K-State said, well, if it's all right with you, we'll use their reservations. They went back and had dinner there last night. Ah, sounds good to me. Banner had been changed. 45-44, to go in the ballgame. Look how far they make Richmond pop out just to get the ball. Richmond works the baseline, double team. Milt Newton gets it. He and Manning collaborated. They forced him to his left, and he had nowhere to go. Richard 0 for 5 in the game. Has the ball now. Manning for 3. He can hit that. Doesn't this time. But Piper with a rebound. Foul on Henson. Here's a man that really gets very little credit. In fact, one point this season they were booing Chris Piper because they expected so much from him, but he'd been plagued with injuries. And right now he's playing with a muscle and the stomach muscle that needs to be reattached at the end of the season. That's how tough a competitor he is. Minor back in for Kansas. We're at the Pontiac Silverdome. Midwest regional final between the number four seed and the number six seed. And it's been a tight ball game all the way. Largest lead of the game has been seven. Three-point field goals. Kansas now one of eight. Barry has the only one. And Kansas State five of 11. 45-44, 10, 15 to go. Before one of these teams joins Oklahoma as the second team from the Big Eight in Kansas City. That's the three, and that's good. Bill Newton. He is going to be the man. That's where the shots are going to be. Richmond getting a rest. Newton has 11 points. He was held at only four in the win over Vandy. First time he had not been in double figures in a long time. Taken away by Keith Harris, the sometimes enigmatic sophomore from Santa Monica, California. Pritchard, he's 0 for 6. Boy, he's off the mark today. I think Larry's not bumped. Number 12, Henson, his third. And they say he's not coming back, right? <laughs> he says, all I, can, all I can do is wait until Danny Manning leaves, and I'm still there next year, and the rumors right. will stop. I, I think uh, Larry Brown, you know, to, to spell that rumor, yeah. as a former coach myself, I think he's met all his challenges. I think he'd like a little serenity in his life, and I think he's got it at Kansas. Oh, man. It's not exactly the focal point of publicity in the United States. No, but Larry has been, uh, you know, in the headlines wherever he's been. And I think, uh, you know, he's not a kid anymore. That's great stuff for young coaches. But right now, I think he wants to have a good career and enjoy himself. 
Kevin Pritchard gets one. 49. 40. Oklahoma's already going to Kansas City. Arizona or North Carolina will join them. Arizona, North Carolina coming up next here on CBS. We complete the four parts of the final four. four. Duke is in. They'll take on the winner of this game, Kansas or Kansas State. And Kansas has used a run now, 49-44, equaling their largest lead of the game. Milt Richmond, Mitch Richmond, now is my turn. Mitch uh -huh. Richmond is back in. <laughs> it's, it's contagious. It sure is. <laughs> it sure is. Away from the ball. Richmond. And Milt Newton was celebrating. I don't know whether he suckered him into the foul or what. Richmond. He was out there trying to set a pick. His second. And uh, college basketball, you react to those bumps every once in a while, you'll get a whistle. <laughs> Are you saying they call it tight? I'll tell you, I didn't see it, so. Oh, okay. I'm being diplomatic. All right. 49-44, 9.15 to go. Keith Harris. They might get Manning over the top. Yep, they did. Uh, you can see that uh, the 3-2 defense of Kansas State now has been extended a little bit, and they're able to slip the ball more inside than they were in the first half, particularly the players other than Manning. Full court press employed by Kansas. Mark Dobbins has come off the bench for K-State number 41. He joins Henson, Richmond, Ron Meyer, and Will Scott. Will Scott, 13 first-half points. Now, Pritchard is out watching him at the three-point line. They've been denying him access to the ball. He has no points in this half. Richmond looks his way, pulls up, and takes the jumper himself. Long rebound, Pritchard. Well, they had him moving to his left again. Manning playing way out. Asked for the ball. It's real. Oh, it's taken away, Scott. Lincoln Miner just wasn't paying attention. Scott will shoot a couple. Manny gets his third foul. Let's go back and look at Larry Brown, who was trying to call timeout with Manning out at the point. Number 24, Piper in for Kansas. <laughs> boy, Wally. Recognize the symptoms? Oh. I would tell you. 14 Scott will shoot for Kansas State. I used to shoot over a water bucket. I heard that. Oh, I just get frustrated. Manning has picked up his third. He has played the entirety of the game. Miners out after that last miscue. And Scooter Berry, who's had a fine game, comes back in. Gets a pat on the head from Larry Brown. And Scott's at the free throw line. Miner went out and played some pretty aggressive defense and helped uh, Kansas get this four-point lead. Got an 83% free throw shooter. Lead down to three, 8.25 to go in the ball game. Somebody just does not want to go back to Kansas tomorrow. <laughs> this is an extraordinary situation. Well, it's just not losing in the tournament. It's having to go back into the States after you lost to your competitor. That's a tough go. So much riding on this. Here's Pritchard, who's really been cold. Barry. Shot clock at 15. Barry. That's 11 points for Scooter Barry. He's had an outstanding game, Tommy. Well, he has stepped up to the challenge and then some. And that's what Larry Brown has been looking for from Geldner or anybody. Somebody to take charge other than Manny. The last time these two teams played in the Big 8 semifinal, there's a three-pointer. Scott still hasn't hit from the field in this half. The last time these two teams played, Pritchard was out with strained knee ligaments. Scooter Berry had to start and was so nervous, he really didn't contribute. But what a difference he's made in this game. Time has been called. A five-point Kansas lead. And has taken one of his team defenders out of the team defense. You'll see Kevin Pritchard right now guarding a three-point shooter. And he never moves, and therefore, Richmond was forced to take the shot. So they're really concentrating on Will Scott to make sure that they can't get an easy pass out to Will Scott to get that three-point shot going. 
Well, you saw the Geldner Pritchard stat of 16 points, but that does not include Scooter Berry in the backcourt, who's had a big game with 11 of those 16 points. 51-46, 7.20 to go in the ballgame. Scott goes for the steal, hit back in by Newton. Well, oh, that's pretty aggressive zone defense, but you can go out and make almost steals and passes to the wing. Three points! Wow, what a shot that was. Now, Will Scott went out and tried to gamble on a steal back to the point, and by doing that, the ball got down into the corner. That's also his responsibility when Newton's down there, and he never got close to Newton. Largest lead of the game now for Kansas, underneath the mire. Manning playing with three fouls, has to back away. Goes to the floor, ties it up, possession arrow, Kansas. And Manning shows a little enthusiasm as he gets up. Uh, Manning had to be very careful, and Meyer pulled, pulled a smart move on Manning, gave him a fake, step around, and Manning also a very smart move not to foul and pick up his fourth. Field goal percentage in this half. Kansas at 53%. The base started off hitting eight of their first ten. They cooled off a little bit. The lead is at eight, and we've got six, 17 to go. Kansas trying to get back into the final four for the first time since 86 when they lost to Duke in the semifinals. And what irony that would be because the winner of this game takes on Duke in Kansas City. There's a turnover, that's eight on Kansas. Lon Kruger's team is trying to get into the final four for the first time since 1964. Kansas has won one national championship. K-State never has. They've been in the final four three times. Scott for three, yes. He had Barry in his face that time. I'll tell you, he ran Barry off three picks. That's how he got open. And Barry almost got to the shot, but Will Scott, such a quick release shooter. Kansas State, six of 13. Well, Will Scott is taking, coming out and making all kinds of gambles out of his own defense, and that's what K-State needs. Manning, again, Newton this time the leap underneath. Kansas ball, however. And Scooter Barry really was responsible for maintaining possession. He got his nose dirty underneath that glass. So he's one of those guards going back oh, to the Oh, yeah. Guy. Oh, yeah. I don't think he picked that up from his dad. His dad was a pretty good rebounder in his day when he wanted a rebound. 5-10. Richard. He ends the drought. Three-pointer. He hit 40% from three-point range last year, has struggled all this season. And that should make it that much easier to get the ball inside for Kansas. Richmond tries a three-pointer. Piper with a foul on the rebound over the back. Kansas foul number 24. Piper, his second. You watch at the top of your screen, on, on the right of your screen, and here comes Scott underneath a whole bunch of picks, and there's Barry. Had to come over the top of all of that to try and get to him. That's an awful lot of manpower to try and run between or through or over or even under to try to get to a good shooter. Ball will be inbounded now by Richmond. Five team fouls on Kansas State. Three on Kansas. Neither team in the bonus yet. Got the three. Just a little off the mark. McCoy with the tip. No. McCoy gets it again. Foul on Piper. Now, one thing that has been remarkable in the Kansas State corner in the games we've seen them is their ability to keep their poise under pressure and i'm going to really look at what they do in this next three and four and a half minutes because they have shown some outstanding poise under tough conditions that foul was not on that man chris piper instead it was called on kevin pritchard number 14 and that's his third mccoy no a little off balance when he released the ball got to follow through to the hoop straight to the basket He's going angling off to the side when he shoots it. That's like shooting, trying to hit a target 
with a quick draw. Bump shooting from the hip. Lead of seven. Clock shows 4.35 to go. Now they're extending the defense, K-State. Manning, way out the front. Shot clock at 18. Barry passes, kicks it off to Piper, takes the two-pointer short, Richmond rebound. They did run about 30 seconds off the clock. That was a good shot, too. Richmond with 10 points today. Milt Newton has been on him most of the afternoon. Keith Harris sometimes. Now Barry comes out. Henson for three. Richmond, great position on the rebound, and Newton fouled him. Well, that's what makes Richmond so tough. He can play big, and he can play small. And right then, he played big, very much bigger than Milt Newton. His second. That's the fifth team foul on Kansas. So still not in the bonus. Lincoln Miner will come back in, and Scooter Berry will go to the Kansas bench. Scooter Barrett just has played an outstanding game for Kansas. What a job he did. His court awareness. They've been searching for a point guard to take a little of the responsibility away from Pritchard. Let him get back into his shooting stroke. And I think Barry provided that. Went to his left again. Henson. Long rebound. Henson. This is two. McCoy with a rebound. Great work on the board. The lead is down to five. Timeout, Kansas State. 3.15 to go. Winner here is going home to Kansas City. Final four. By the way, this is the first time the Big Eight will have two teams in the final four. It's been accomplished six previous times. The Big Ten has done it twice. The Big East has done it twice. The ACC once. And there's a chance of an all Big Eight, all ACC final four this year. Arizona will have something to say about that a little later, though. Kansas State has gone now to a man-to-man -man defense. Oh, what a pass by Manning. And Piper can't get the basketball where he will shoot. On a man-to-man, -man, as soon as the ball went into the low post, Manning Kansas felt State the double team more than saw it and knew third. where the opening was right away. That's, that's one of the great things about Danny Manning. His intelligence. Number 24, Piper will shoot for Kansas Here's the man-for-man. -man. Tommy, why the change now? I, I think they have to go out and be aggressive, show them something different, maybe get out into the passing lane and make a few steals, but if you're going to double Manning, then you better rotate quickly to the open people close to the hoop. And Manning's pass and recognition of what was going on was just right on the money. In fact, before he even got to the cashier's window. What a job. Piper misses both. Newton with a rebound. He's had a huge game today. A must game. Harry Brown said we need those type, uh, that type of game from Newton and one of our small people. Milt Newton with 16 points. Richmond rims out. Rebound Manning in Kansas. 2.30 to go. Seven point lead Kansas. See if they work on the clock a little bit. I'm going to have a tough time working on a clock with this man-to-man, -man, but Manning will be able to handle the ball out there against Bledsoe. Oh, underneath, backdoor cut. Scooter Berry. Extending the man-to-man, -man, a little pick and a curl off it. A layup, beautiful read. Richmond, three points. Scooter Berry, rebound. Foul, McCoy. Berry will shoot. Larry Brown off the bench. Kansas State foul number 44, McCoy, his second. Larry Brown said he wanted Danny Manning's senior year to be something special. It has been. Danny Manning. We're 
Originally, I think, was slotted to be a forward on this ball club. Was forced to play center when all their big people got hurt or were suspended for in it, academics, what have you. And I think he's profited from this season immeasurably because he's become, in addition to a finesse player, he's learned how to play the power game. And that really makes him devastating. Don't give up, baby. Two for Barry. And a double-digit lead for the first time in the game. We've got less than two minutes to play. Henson, no. Barry, another rebound. Two on one. Richard. Richard. Wesco oh. follows. Foul call. 94 seconds away. Will it be Kansas State or Kansas? Seconds left here in Pontiac, Michigan. Kansas leading by 11. Kansas with three timeouts left. K-State two. Fouls to give one for Kansas. The possession arrow belongs to Kansas State. There is Scooter Berry who has 15 points today and a number of rebounds and a, just a terrifically alert ball game. You know, we've heard many announcers talk about these situations where there's no tomorrow. And of course, there always is a tomorrow for a losing ball club. But you know what it feels like? I've been in these situations, and tomorrow, it would appear that Kansas State, after reaching to the biggest emotional peak, the adrenaline pumping through their veins, to bring them up to the super high, biggest high they ever had, you know, they'll feel like they fell off a cliff. And that's a tough thing to overcome. And coming up next, North Carolina against Arizona. Ron Meyer, four-year player at Kansas State. He and Mark Dobbins. K-State came in favor. This, as we said, is the fourth time these two teams have met this year. Kansas won at K-State. K-State won at Kansas, and then K-State won in the Big 8 semis. What Kansas did today to Kansas State's defense, after having seen it so many times, was know where the shots were going to be, and the players had a willingness to take those shots, and they were outside shots from the foul line in, mostly in the corners. Pritchard did it. Scooter Barry did it. All of them that were in that position Newton did it. So they had several guys that were testing the, the interior defense of Kansas State all day long. And I think Kansas played that defense like an accordion, inside, outside. One minute to go, foul on Steve Henson. Kansas State foul Archie, as well. Henson is fourth. Archie Marshall, who was a starter the last time Kansas played Duke, that was in the semifinals of the Final Four in Dallas. He went out with a knee injury that cost him last year. Then he came back after all the rehabilitation, started this season, went out with the injury to St. John's, and in his honor, Danny Manning has worn the wristband with number 23 all year long. They also lost Marvin Grants to academics. There's Ed Manning, Danny's father and assistant to Larry Brown they've had various other discipline and academic problems and who would have believed that the Kansas Jayhawks are going to make it back to the final four they right. have a 14 point lead in less than a minute to go it takes a special breed to overcome the things that Kansas overcame this year and Kansas State too they changed their style of play but there's a tenaciousness, I believe, in Danny Manning that carried through the rest of his teammates. And also, guys like Piper. You don't see guys like Piper every day on a basketball court playing with the injuries that he had. Larry Brown's going to make some substitutions now. Ron Kruger looks on. Mike Maddox, the freshman from Oklahoma City, coming in. Danny Manning going out. Number 14, Pritchard shooting for Kansas, one and one. At the line, Kevin Pritchard. Ron Meyer 
coming in for Mark Dobbins. 20 points, 6 rebounds. Below his average again, but I don't think he minds. And the senior, Mitch Richmond, 11 points. That equals his lowest point total of the year. And his name, Mitch Richmond, you're going to hear it about for a lot of years to come. ago offensive foul Larry Brown up two years ago Kansas won the regional in Kansas City to go to Dallas they were heavily favored that year but the longest of shots this year finishing third in the big eight and they're going to the final four again they had a young man named Ryan Gray that the team adopted two years ago a young man with an inoperable brain tumor Ryan Gray is still here. And Kevin Pritchard celebrates on the sideline. That young man is tough. And what a game for Scooter Berry. Kind of... You can hear him say, is, yeah, he's a nice basketball player, but boy, did he respond to the challenge. Really emotionally, a big, big game to step up and then have the willingness to fail. That's a big, big factor that coaches look for in young players, and Scooter Barry did it. The man who was fouled is Marvin Maddox. He's a senior from Pomona, California. He's going to go to the free throw line. And among the many fascinating stories for this Kansas team. Here's Mike Maddox coming in. Marvin Maddox, number 54, is a senior. And in the win over Vanderbilt on Friday night, he scored the first two points of his career. And here is Marvin Maddox, the man about whom we're speaking at the free throw line right now. That's Maddox. Misses. Oh, could have had three points. And gets a three-pointer. Jayhawks have done it. They're going to Kansas City. wonderful scene of Archie Marshall, the injured senior, tearing down the net, cutting down the net after you won the right to the Final Four. Archie, this has been a, a very difficult season for you, and how ironic that the team is going back to play Duke, the team against whom you originally got hurt. I tell you, no matter how difficult it's been for me, we're here, and we're going farther, and that's all that counts, and I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad to be here, and uh, we worked hard for it all year, and uh, the next step is the national championship, and I can't wait. Well, standing next to Tommy Heinsohn, I don't know, Scooter Barry, if you want to pick a day to have a great day, this is a pretty good one. Tommy? Well, Larry Brown, your coach, kept saying, Scooter, that we have to have somebody additionally to Danny Manning step up to the challenge. How did you step up to it? Well, I just looked to take the open shot. You know, coach has been saying to step in and take the shot because they've been sagging back on Danny all year. So I finally took the open shot and I made it and couldn't have picked a better day, like you said, to, to make him today. 
but you had a tremendous amount of poise in doing it in a pressure-packed game. Thank you. Uh, I think it's just been, uh, you know, the team's been so great all year long, and our players have finally come together and gelled as a team, and it made it easy for me to play good, and I'm glad I had a good week. Well, you did a great job. All right, Larry Brown, Scooter Berry, Archie Marshall, congratulations. Have fun at home. Thank you. All right, Larry. All right, Scooter. They want Duke. They got him. It's Kansas against Duke. Part of the puzzle's been fit. Let's go back to Jim Nance in New York. All right, you know, Rick Berry uh, won the NBA championship for the Golden State Warriors back in 1975, but I'll be willing, willing to bet that he's never been more proud in his life than he is today with that performance by his son, Scooter. It has to make him feel good, and Scooter Berry really did a nice job, shook off all the nerves and came out there and came through when the team needed it. All right, we talked about the fact that Duke and Kansas met in 86 in the semifinals. They also met this season. The game went into overtime, and Duke won that contest 74-70. to 70. So the last two games have gone to Duke, and they've been four-point wins. What about the one coming up next week? Although I'm chiseling my thoughts on what tactically will be done in those in that game there between Duke and Kansas. What immediately comes to mind is that two of the best multi-talented big men and Danny Ferry and Danny Manning going at it definitely is going to be impressive. All right. Of course, we still wait. One more team. So rival to Kansas City. That will be decided in the West between North Carolina and Arizona. The game